You've probably heard you should use lazy fetching to avoid performance problems. Maybe you've even watched my previous video about it. But did it solve all your performance problems? It probably didn't. And that's because lazy fetching is only the first step. You also have to tell Hibernate which relationships it shall initialize when fetching your entity. And that's easier than it might sound. It only requires a small change to your queries. And I'll show you how to do that in this video. Here you can see a typical example of an n plus 1 select issue caused by a lazily fetch relationship. The book's attribute of the author entity models a lazily fetched many to many relationship with the book entity. That means when Hibernate fetches an author entity, it doesn't initialize this relationship. It waits until you call the getBooks method and use the return list in your business code. You can clearly see that in the log output. The first query only gets the author entity from the database and doesn't initialize the books association. Because of that, Hibernate needs to execute an additional query when you call the getBooks method to fetch the books written by that author. My small test database only contains 11 author entities. And even here, the initialization of the books relationship requires 11 additional queries. That's one for each author and shows why this problem is called the n plus 1 select issue. The test performed one query to get n authors from the database and the initialization of the relationship caused n additional queries so that we get n plus 1 queries. This problem obviously scales with the number of authors in my database. On a bigger production database, it could easily cause the execution of several thousand queries. You can easily avoid this by adding a join fetch clause to the JPQA query. It looks similar to a simple join clause that you might already use in your queries. But there is a significant difference. The additional fetch keyword tells Hibernate to not only join the two entities within the query, but also to fetch the associated entities from the database. As you can see in the log output, that has a huge effect on the generated query. It not only joins the two tables in the from clause, Hibernate also selects all columns mapped by the author and book entity and maps the result to managed entity object. And that does two things. First of all, Hibernate obviously gets all the information it needs to instantiate the author entities with the related book entities. That's why we added the join fetch clause to the query. And second, it creates a product in the query's result. It now consists of pairs of records from the author and book table. That means it contains each author as often as they have written books. Okay, one quick warning if you're using Hibernate 4 or 5, then I get back to things relevant for all Hibernate versions, including the handling of multiple join fetch clauses. When using Hibernate 4 or 5, you have to add the distinct keyword to your query. Otherwise, Hibernate performs a one-to-one -one mapping of the result set and returns multiple references to the same author entity. This was a really annoying issue in older versions, and I'm very happy they fixed it for Hibernate 6. Okay, back to the things relevant for all Hibernate versions. Depending on the number of entities you select and the relationship size, your result set might get huge and cause problems for your database. So before adding a join fetch clause to your query, you should estimate how huge the result set might get. If it gets into the five or six figures, you should double check if you really need all that data and maybe talk to your DBA because fetching and handling millions of data points takes time and usually causes additional performance issues. Such problems can easily occur if you add multiple join fetch clauses to your query, as I did here. Technically, Hibernate supports an unlimited number of joint fetch clauses in a query. And as you can see, this one worked as expected. Hibernate fetched all columns mapped by the author, book, and review entities and mapped the result to entity objects and initialized relationships. But there are a few things you need to know. Multiple joint fetch clauses don't cause any problems as long as you join fetch to one relationships. But if you try to join fetch multiple too many relationships, you have to make sure to model them as a set. Otherwise, Hibernate throws a multiple back fetch exception. 
a bag is a Hibernate specific unordered collection type, and joint fetching multiple of them causes problems when mapping the result set to a graph of entities. So better model your too many relationships as a set so that you can joint fetch multiple of them. This query also clearly shows the downside of fetching multiple too many relationships. The size of the result set is the product of all joint fetched relationships, and this quickly gets out of control. But that doesn't mean you should never join fetch multiple relationships, like some people advise. The size of this product depends on the size of all join fetch relationships. So as long as you know that each of them only contains a few related entities, everything is totally fine. And that's very often the case. Those queries perform well and there's no need to implement any complex workaround. Let's keep it simple as long as there is no need to make it complex. That's also the main reason why join fetch clauses are my preferred way to tell Hibernate which relationships it shall fetch. It's by far the easiest option. But it's not the only one, and I totally understand if you don't want to modify all of your queries or don't want to write multiple identical queries with different join fetch clauses. In that case, you should separate your query from the fetching definition. You can't do that with a join fetch clause, but I'll show you an alternative in the next video.